There you go. Hey, today I'm going to talk about peculiar defense mechanisms in various organisms. And so I'm going to go over the ones that I found most interesting and uh, just basically describe and show you a bunch of pictures. These defense mechanisms um, are um, uh, really uh, complicated and um, uh, they have like evolved over time. Um, a lot of them uh, got chosen as mutations and uh, uh, stayed in because these organ organisms were able to uh, survive. So uh, I want to start with the exploding ant. Now this ant was found in uh, is found in Malaysia and Brunei, and it has this f really cool mechanism called autothesis in which it basically um, secretes this uh, fluid which helps in uh, tearing open its own gland and muscle. And so um, what happens is that um, the ant kind of dies, but its enemy ends up dying as well. <laughs> so it's kind of this, this altruistic way of dying and colonies um, and, uh, within this ant, the, the workers, they um, do this to protect their colony and end up killing the, uh, the enemy as well. So, um, I thought it was pretty cool. The next Just organism nice. is the hairy frog. Uh, it's a hairy reptile. It, um, it's a peculiar feature is, it's kind of, uh, it doesn't really die, but it does something weirder. It kind of, it, um, it's able to uh, break its own appendages, and within those appendages, it, it possesses these retractable claws which it can use to uh, defend itself. The Bombardier beetle. This organism is found in Burkini, Pasteur, and other exotic uh, Mediterranean countries. Um, it, it has this um, uh, cool mechanism in which it... Uh, so what it does is it sprays this this liquid at you at which is at boiling temperatures and it kind of looks like this really cool liquid gun so every time it's approached by a predator it kind of sprays the liquid uh, on its face and the like like uh, it could even like harm human skin because that liquid is basically at boiling temperatures um, how it does is like it's got these two ducts within it and um, they they uh, they create or uh, secrete this, uh, each of these two chemicals individually, hydroquinones and hy hydrogen peroxide. And what happens when it encounters a predator is that it, um, um, well, uh, the, the, the gland that kind of holds these chemicals, it kind of opens and these two chemicals mix together and they start reacting and they, they create uh, like temperatures uh, at about 100 degrees Celsius. and that's basically a boiling liquid for you, and um, it ends up killing its predator. Also, um, like you guys would be thinking that, I mean, if, if it's got all this boiling stuff within its body, why doesn't it affect itself? I mean, it could just self like self destruct. But um, what it also does is it kind of closes the chamber in which um, it's creating this chemical because. Um, when this chemical reacts, it produces like a lot of gas, kind of creates like a pressure, and it kind of ends up closing the, the chamber in which it's creating this chemical. And so it doesn't harm its body at all. All it does is shoot uh, the liquid, and it, uh, it kind of carries on with its life happily ever after. <laughs> the next, uh, the next uh, uh, creature is the turkey vulture. Now this, this, this bird, it, it, it's really, um, it doesn't really have shame, I guess, but what it does is it, um, it feeds on, uh, I mean, it's a vulture, so it's an, um, uh, like, it feeds on, like, dead animals, and uh, vultures often feed on animals that have been dead for quite some time, so those animals don't really smell that good, and uh, it's got all that bad stuff within its uh, body, 
So most of the predators don't even approach this creature because they know that if they're going to eat it, they're probably going to get sick. And so it's not really diet food, but the predators who try, what it does is it goes right in front of them and pukes. And um, it can't even fly, so it's just right there squatting on the ground, like just waddles around you and pukes. And the predator just gets disgusted and stares at the puke and the waltzer just waddles away. <laughs> um, I thought that was really smart, but I doesn't really have any friends, I guess. Um, <laughs> The next creature, the Spanish Rib Mute. Okay, so um, this is pretty much like a mutant. Like, I mean, the, the kind of superheroes we'd imagine in, in the reptile kingdom. Um, because what it does is it, it's got this elaborate defense mechanism. So step one, it starts crying. Um, uh, not exactly crying, but like uh, secreting these um, uh, poisonous uh, chemicals out of its body. Um, some of those pores are in its face too, so it's got like this white, gooey poison all over its body. And then it protrudes its uh, pivot ribs right uh, out through its skin. And so it's got like these, these ribs sticking out that are poisonous, so it's basically like uh, this, uh, it's kind of, it's basically like this poisonous creature and if any, uh, Predator tried to attack it, it would probably get poisoned. Die. The next organism is the pygmy sperm whale. Um, just so you know, like uh, it's not called a sperm whale because it kind of looks like a sperm. It's more because the first time the uh, people found um, this whale, uh, I don't know who, I don't really remember, um, but it happened long ago and. Um, they were mostly explorers, and they um, cut open through its uh, skin to see its internal structure, or uh, probably just for food. And they found this gooey white stuff in it, and one of the sailors probably was like, oh, this looks like semen, and since, ever since then it's called the sperm whale. So its defense mechanism, um, what it does is it secretes um, this kind of... Uh, it's got this weird anal secretion, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is brown in color. It f uh, basically foams in the liquid, and what it does is kind of like starts spinning, like swimming around, and creates like this huge uh, fog around the predator. And um, it can do that for hours. It keeps secreting it. Um, there've been cases that have been documented in which this whale has been like. Uh, there've been cases where sperm whales. Uh, have been at it for a really long time, uh, close to like hours, and uh, they create basically create this huge fog of uh, this liquid, and the predator uh, is basically left there. It usually swims away or um, stays within it, but it's pretty effective. So um, the last. Uh, it's a defense mechanism. It's not really a defense mechanism, it's more like to attack, but I thought it was really complicated and cool the way uh, the peacock mantis shrimp uh, gets its food. Um, shrimps aren't really that popular, I mean, but uh, trust me, this guy's really cool. So what it does is um, it's got like this appendage, which is kind of like a hammer, and um, there are two types of shrimps, but these are the, the hammer kind. And what they do is they look, they take snail and they keep hammering it until it breaks open its shell, and then it's got like it's a free dinner or a hard-earned dinner. Uh, but um, the the mechanism is cool because um, these appendages are uh, are uh, work in two stages. So the first part, um, it's got like this really cool bone, which is kind of, it's, it's a limb that's, it's shaped in the form of a hyperboloid. And, um, you guys would be thinking like, what's the point of, I mean, okay fine, it, it looks like that, but how's it useful, but what this uh, shrimp actually does is it, it, um, it's able to contract its limb in such a way that it, it formed a spring. And so, it has like, massive amount of force here and so when it 
when it re releases its limb, it's got like tons of force. I think it's it's the highest documented force ever made by any organism. And uh, um, what also happens when it um, when it hits a target is that um, researchers when they when they actually recorded uh, uh, like the organism hitting a target, they saw bursts of light. And they wondered what's this light all about? Why is there light here? And they found that there's there's a liquid uh, within its appendage which because of its high speed there's uh, liquid moving at different uh, sp like different f speeds within within the appendage and that creates a lot of internal pressure and uh, in fluid dynamics that's called cavitation and that cavitation produces so much force that you have heat and light and uh, you can actually see this when you see the peacock mantis shrimp actually hit a target. You can see there's this is like this the small beam of light, and that also I mean, it's got like two forces that couple and give it this mass amount of force, um, and that's how it's able to get its nail for dinner. <laughs> so um, that's about it. Uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. Nice.